Hi everyone, Tiffany here and welcome to my quilting life. So it's so Sunday and today, like I had promised, I'm going to be quilting last week's project, which is the block on my wall. We're going to get that done. Okay, so hi Vicki, hi Diane. Alrighty, so first of all, we're going to start off by basting the project. So I'm going to show you and walk you through that. There's two different ways you can do it. You can pin baste or you can um, spray baste. Today we're going to pin baste, but spray basting is pretty much the same thing without having to put all those pins in. So, <laughs> But we're going to pin baste, um, but I'll show you how to spray as well while we're here. Yes, it did, didn't it? Hi, Billy. All right, so I have to change the camera's angle. Obviously, it's going to move around, but I'm going to change the angle so that you guys can watch the pin basting. It's going to shake for a second. And we're going to have to do this twice because of this whole thing. So. It's nice to have a table when basting a quilt. Um, this table obviously isn't as big, so kitchen table, dining room table, you know, those kind of tables works. It's also good to have the big pins. I just seem to have a ton of other sizes, but the bigger ones are the ones that I would suggest. And if they, they sell curved ones as well that you can get. Um, so a bunch of those, obviously you need your batting and you need your backing. So for one, I'm gonna show you how my I pre-made pre my backing for this. I'm gonna just lay this up here. For spraying, you would take and line your project up. And this batting is an 80-20 so it's smooth on one side and it's lumpy on the other side we want the lumpy side which will be up towards my needle so i want my smooth side down on the backing and i'm going to align these up but taking it away and just toss it back up here that way it's nice and centered so when you're spray basting, if you want to spray baste your project, first you would need spray. And I don't even know where my spray is. Huh, okay. I don't know where it is. So for spray basting, you would take and put these two layers together first by folding it back, spray it, and then rolling it back on like so. And then you would move to the next section and so on and so forth. So you would once that's sprayed, you would flatten it out. I just bring it down onto itself, pull the rest onto the table, and you would lift this side up, keeping it nice, all the way to where it's stuck again, spray this section, and then roll it back down on there to where it sticks to the glue, which... Hi, I don't even know where it went. Hi, Jeanette. So that would be for spray basting, and then you would put your top layer on as well, same idea by centering it where you want it after the back sprayed. You would flatten it out, make sure everything's nice and equal, and you would start by spraying the area, trying to get all the thread out of the way. It's making a big thread mess. And then you would put it back down with the spray where it's nice. And then you'd do the same. Pull it up. Spray that section. Come back to your quilt top. Roll it back on. And it'll stay really, really nice. Kind of like it's doing right now because it's such a small project. Big projects are a little bit more difficult, but they are doable. So my back is just a little bit bigger than my top by about two inches all the way around. I mean, it's four inches bigger. 
and the whole top and I'm going to just smooth this out before I start pinning because I'm pin basting this project because now I don't even know where my spray base is so <laughs> it's a good thing I don't know where it is because then I would have to pin either way so I'm going to straighten this all out I'm going to trim any threads that are hanging out the top making it nice and flat. I'm going to check the bottom, make sure it's nice and flat, everything's sticking where it's supposed to, and I'm just going to take some pins, and I'm going to start with this corner right here, pin that in, and I'm just going to flatten it and move my way down by pu pushing the pin down into the cutting mat, picking it back up, and hooking it. I'm just going to come down, push the pin into the cutting mat. I'm not going to put a whole heck of a lot of pins because this is sticking really nicely onto the batting alone. But you do want to put your pins at least every um, three to four inches apart. And just move it around. I make sure it goes all the way to the cutting mat so that I can feel for the back of the quilt put those pins in. So I'm going to do this whole section right here. Like I said, I suggest the bigger pins. They work easier for these kind of projects. But if you don't have big pins and you only have little pins, go ahead and use your little pins. And I keep laying it flat as I go. So the more I go, the more I keep laying it flat and brushing it out. I just keep brushing it out with my hands so it's nice and flat. Throw some pins in here. Sometimes I can't never get these pins to hook. <laughs> pins hate me. I try to put pins in all four corners and at least along the edges. So all four corners and in the middle. So if this is a longer quilt, I would put two Per the middle, you know what I mean, on both sides. So I'm just going to do one. On the edges I kind of lift the quilt because <laughs> or else it'll grab. So I'll put one right here in the middle. Still flattening it out as I go. And then I'm going to pull it onto the table this way and put some more pins in it. I'm going to throw one in right here, throw one here at the edge, and I just keep flattening it out as I go. Come to the other side, move yourself around your table if you're using a table. They also make straight pins um, that have little caps, so you can use, let's see if I can find one that's long. They have these, for these pins, I don't know if you guys can see that, but for regular pins, for the really long ones, they have this like cap thing that goes on it, so that you can actually put a regular pin in it, and then you put the cap on the pin. I think Leah Day uses those. So those are pretty good to use as well. If you have those, use those. I've never used them before, but it would probably be different than... Use, or the same thing, just different the way you hook it down, obviously. But same concept. But they make them little cat things. I don't know where you can buy them even, actually. You might have to look online. They'd probably be like straight pin caps. The only thing I do want to reiterate on is smooth part of your bat batting goes towards your backing 
and the rougher part goes towards the top. You want that needle punk the needle punctured part towards the top. Smooth side goes on the back. This is for those of you who use 8020s. So smooth side on the back, lumpy side on the top. Make sure you guys do that. And you can see it, it's very noticeable that there's a shine on the back side for that other side. So they even have it on the darker colored cotton ones. There's a smooth side and then there's a bumpy side. I'm gonna throw another pin in right here. It's never you can never pin too much either, so throw one in up here. It's all nice and smooth. And I'm gonna throw another one in right here. Like I said, you, you don't you can't put too many pins. I just don't want too many because this is such a small project. I'm gonna throw one in right here. It doesn't need that many for such a small project. Like I said, this one's sticking to the batting, and with the 8020 cotton polys or even wool battings, um, they stick to the fabric really good. So, which is good. <laughs> All right. Now I'm gonna come on the other side. I'm gonna close my pins up. Slide them out of the way. I'm going to check the back by picking the whole project up and I can turn it around and you can see there's no wrinkles, there's no folds, creases or nothing. It's nice and flat with a big huge quilt. I don't think you can really do that but these small ones it's not that hard. Alright so we're going to bring this camera closer so that we can start some free motion quilting. And I actually have no idea what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to start quilting. So we're going to bring this nice and close so you guys can see. I don't know. Do you guys want to be in front of me or to the side of me? I think the front of me might be better. Things are like... I don't think you can see exactly what I'm stitching from right here. But you can see my hand motions and stuff from right here. as I'm going to get it, guys. Right there. Is that a better angle? I think that's a better angle. Right there. Perfect. Okay. So I want my sleeves out of the way, and today I am using the gloves from Anna. So I'm going to slide my two fingers in here with my grippy side down. Hopefully I could deal with thread really easily with these. I'm not sure yet because I haven't used them. This will be the first project I use these on. I put them on the other day though to make sure that they fit right and how they go on. So new gloves. They feel right. Now I'm going to slide this in. I think what I'm going to do is some dot to dot quilting. Or what I, I don't really call it dot to dot, but everyone else does. I just call it lines, straight lines. I'm going to start in the middle. And I'm going to do, hmm, I don't know. It's hard to look at a quilt and say, what do I do? Unless I just do an all over something. I'm kind of thinking... The flower right here in this middle part. I don't want this pin there either if I'm going to do something. Hi, Jolene. Alright. Let's see. Can I put a flower right here? Up, oh, double leaf, and back. Yep, we can. So, what I'm going to do, so I'm going to just lay this here so you can see, is I'm going to start right here in the center and I'm going to come up like right along this seam and make a a round make a like a let's see hold on let me grab a pencil and paper so i can show you i really suck at drawing but i'm going to draw something so we're going to pretend this is the center of the block obviously don't mind my drawing it's absolutely absolutely horrible all right so there's the center of the block right Mm 
They are called, uh, well, you can just buy them at quilt, quiltgloves.com. Oh, here's the, I didn't know if you guys could see that. Quiltgloves.com. They're the ones that Angela Walters uses. They came to me from Anna. So I'm going to tip this camera down so you can see what I'm doing here. All right. Is that good enough? Okay. So I'm going to start right here in the center. And I'm going to tell you again, my drawing sucks. So I'm going to like pretend I'm coming up this. And I'm going to come around and do a loop and come around. Coming back to the center. Come up around, loop, come back around. Come up, loop, and back around. Come up, loop, oops. Obviously that would be prettier. So that's pretty much what I'm gonna do in the center. Okay? That. And I'll just leave the pencil and paper here. And then I'll show you when I'm done because I'll just break thread so you can see. center find my thread it kind of feels weird grabbing it through here so I'm gonna put my needle down oops put my presser foot down make sure my thing is lifted all the way needle down needle back up pulling my thread up from the bottom it's hard to grab as loose as I can get it. I'm going to take a couple stitches right here in place. I'll make sure my scissors are up here with me <laughs> so that I can do this. So I'm going to start by going up, curving around, making that curve, and it's not going to be perfect by no means. We control our stitches. I'm going to cut that away right there. Okay, so I'm back in the center and I'm going to do the other side, which I'm going to come this way now. And there we go, breaking a needle. Right there live on camera, guys. See what happens when you pull. So I'm going to lift this up, pull this away, and put a new needle in here. That was an accident, too. Put that right there for a second. Got to snip this away. All right, so I'm going to show you what happens with free motion quilting. It happens often, actually, is more than you guys um, know. Let's see if I can show you this. I don't know how close I can get. See my needle? Broke off, it's sticking way over here. So it hit it. it off. Sometimes this happens. Can't control it. So I'm gonna lift this all the way up so I can get this out best. It's kind of hard to do with these gloves on, unfortunately. Get in the hole. Oh my god. So, you can really see how it hit. This happens. Be careful what you're doing. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> so let's throw a new one in here. I'm using 9014 because I have 30 weight thread in here. Kind of hard to get them out of this little case. I just need one. There we go. So I'm off to a great start today, guys. Breaking needles already.
Okay. So now my machine requires my needle hole to be it facing outward. So I'm going to slide this in. My flat side is on the... Okay, that's not going to work with the gloves on. Got to take the gloves off. Can't do it with gloves on. Oops. Yeah, I use... um. Oh my god, what are they called? Right now I'm using a different needle than I usually use. I uh, normally use... Um... I can't think of it when I'm trying to do this. Get in there. Hold it on. Um, Diane knows. She knows what needles I use. She's seen me use them. I pointed them out before. Okay. So these needles do not line up with my hole for some reason. They are bent wrong. Let me go grab a different one. Because this is not lining up like it's supposed to. I don't like this brand. Let me grab my normal brand. needles that's what I use is organ needles 9014 these guys so I'm not gonna use that other brand because this brand the other brand doesn't seem to like me that's the third needle I've broke this week it just doesn't like me this brand does this machine it goes great with this brand making sure my flat side is on the back. I'm going to put that down. Stay. I'm gonna line that nicely. Give it a little bit of a turn. I'm also going to make sure that it goes to the hole where it's supposed to. Yep. Before I tighten it down. There we go. That's where it's supposed to sit. Okay. Make sure again. So the only thing about these center hold machines, if that needle don't go exactly in the center of that hole, you're screwed. <laughs> so let's re-thread this. Totally not used to threading with um, glove on, but we're going to do it anyway because remember I said I cannot use my threader on here. still have yet to ever, ever figure that thing out. As soon as I'm done threading this, I'll go put the camera back. Okay. All right. That was not supposed to happen. <laughs> but it happened. Okay. Let's go back to this now. I forgot a finger. All right, now let's go back up. Okay, so when you're quilting, by the way, make sure that none of these are folded under. You don't want any of this to happen where it separates and folds under. So the whole entire time you're doing it, that's why I like spray better because spray keeps it all together. You always have to check and make sure. All right, now let's see where I was. It's a good thing that happened at the edge right there. All right. Okay. Lock it in. And now I'm just going to go back and do what I was doing with this. It's almost like a heart, but not as hearty. I clipped my thread when I was away from it because now I ran it over. 
Now I'm going to go down the next one by turning the project. So I'm going to come up around, slight curve up and around. It's kind of like a clover. Before I get to the end, I'm going to snip this. Looks kind of like a four leaf clover, actually. So that's what we're going to call it a four leaf clover. Turn it again and do that last one. And it's far from perfect, but I don't care because this is going on the wall. So let me. Thinking about adding some embellishments to it. I'm going to put the needle up and down, tie it off, pull it away, put it back, pull the thread to the top, and snip. And I'm going to bring it over so you guys can see that it looks like a little four leaf clover. Let's see how well this can show up. So there we have a four leaf clover. I like it. So now to do something in the rest of the quilt. <laughs> the center is done. <laughs> I'm not going to over quilt this one. It's just going to be, um, I don't know. I think I'm going to make sure my snips are where I can find them. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start over here in this corner, come up, come down, come back up, come down, or I'm going to do See, oh my goodness, it's hard to think. Let's see. I'm going to do loop de loops. I have no idea what it's actually called, but I'm going to turn the camera down. So I'm going to draw this little angle that I'm working in. So it's kind of like, like this. Okay. So my kind of angle that I'm working in, so I'll start in the corner right here and come up to here, curve around, come back to here and just do this back and forth, but kind of big. I don't want it too tight. I just want it kind of big, you know, just back and forth until it gets small again in this corner. Okay. That's what I'm going to do in all of those sections around it. So let's go back to it. Again, sorry for all the camera movement today, guys. So this section, this section, the, the four parts that go all the way around is how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to start right here in this corner. Bring my needle down. Pull the thread up bottom and lock it in these gloves are I don't know I guess they work good everything's sticking to them <laughs> the thread is sticking to them okay so I have to come down just a little to do it so I want them to angle this way go made a light slight little angle here speed it up there we go I got it started and again you can adjust your hands and your project as you go 
So as soon as I finish this, I will undo, uh, disconnect the thread and come back and show you what it's, what I did. Oh my god, that's so horrible. This is one I really suck at. Like, big time suck at it. <laughs> I really suck at this one. Oh, and I'm using a cream thread. thread and show you guys just how sloppy I am with these little back and forth things <laughs> I do them just as sloppy as I draw them so I try to make it go straight and then curve the opposite way So that's that. So I'm going to take it to this section, this section, and this section, doing that same exact thing for all those sections. Okay. So I'm going to turn the whole project like so and do those four sections exactly the same. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Sandy. Sorry, I didn't know if I said hi or not. I don't remember. Okay. Alright. So again, just going to do this all over again. Do all these sections. Pull that bobbin thread up. Okay, move it out of my way and go back and forth. Somehow I'm gonna get this tiny little area. So again, I'm just going to tie this one off and go to the next top piece and do the same thing. The reason why I'm not stitching in a ditch is because I don't feel I need to for this because it's going on the wall and it's never coming down. Well, it's up for to be washed. So now I'm going to turn again 
I'm going to come back up to this one. Now I'm going to do something different in all these areas, obviously. This section, obviously, is getting this, but as I go along, all the gray will get something different. thread everywhere. See, it really sticks to these gloves. That's one thing. The thread sticks to these gloves. All right. Get this going. And I'm trying to stay at a steady pace so that all my stitches are the same length. And obviously I have a big ass seam or a big seam right here, sorry about the word. <laughs> Sometimes the seams don't like to go under the presser foot. And I gotta pull this pin out before I get to it. I kind of think the faster that you do these swirly back and forth, the more consistent they come out. And the easier it is to move the quilt. Alright. And tie it off right here. Bring the thread to the top. Come to the next one. As soon as I finish this one, we will I'll show you guys and then we'll come up with something for the next area. I'm gonna trim these as I see them, make sure all that's off of there. Let's get this started. Kind of looks like a corset tie. Maybe that's what this should be called. The corset knot. snips and show you guys so they're really sloppy because this is like told you the worst one I do of everything that I can quilt this is the worst one even on the long arm this is the worst one for me 
Don't know why. It just is. All right. So that was the first one. And then here's number two. And then here's number three. And number four. So, so far, that's what we have. A four-leaf clover right there. And what I'm calling corset tie. Because that's what it looks like. <laughs> Alright, now what we should do with the rest. Let's see. Sometimes I just kind of stand away from it and look at it and go, hmm, this should go here. And clean up all these pins before they end up on the ground. And let's decide on something. So I think for these three triangles, I think I'm just going to go... So it's just a, the half square triangle part, and then the three different blocks I'll do something else in. So the, for, let's draw a half a triangle real quick. So there's three different ones right here next to some solid blocks. I'm just going to come in from here and go up and just make it halfway to the top and back down. And from here, come up and go back down. And I think I'll do it three times like that. I think that looks cool. So that's what I'm going to do. And in all three sections. So I'll have to remove some pins to get to those sections, obviously. So it's the sections, let me get this straight where it needs to be. So it'll be these sections right on the outside. So on the outside of all these, anywhere that there's triangles. But I won't do the solid blocks. Anywhere that there's a solid block, I'll leave those alone. But all the triangles and all this section, I'll fill all these with that. The ones that are around this straight directly. So let's come over here. I'm going to move this pin out of the way. You guys like how I'm drawing it on a piece of paper then showing you since I kind of can't go right up next to it. Is that helping? So I'm going to drop this here. Pull my bottom thread up. And you know this whole entire time I have not checked my tension but if it was you I would go and flip your project upside down like so. And check your tension, which mine is perfect. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about it. But just in case yours isn't, I would say check it. You know, throughout the project. So you like that I'm drawing first and then showing you? I think that helps. Since I kind of can't come up close. So it's pretty clear today. If I, As long as I don't move the camera too much. Uh, Alright, so again, I'm just going to come up almost to the corner but not along the seam just up down and back up the other way and back the other way and one more time so i'm gonna do it three times so i'm gonna come right about there and take it sideways to that corner stop at that corner come back up Stop about here and then come back to this corner again. I'm aiming for the exact corner. I'm stop there and I'll come back up again one more time. Here, using my needle about right there to aim. So you can turn it if you need to. If you don't think that you're going to catch it right on, you can turn the project. Get all this thread out of the way and aim your needle. For that corner so aim your needle for the corner if you have to okay so that one's done let's see without stopping and starting I guess I will follow this looks like I am going to actually no I don't want to I want to stop and start every time you don't have to stop and start every time, but I'm not doing any stitching in the ditch on this project. I just want stops and starts. So 
So you don't have to do that, but I am. So I'm going to come to this corner right here. Do this piece up here. So if I go up, back, up, back, up, back, I want to end in this side for this triangle. So I'm going to start right here on this end. You might want to look at your project to know where you want to start and stop if you're doing it like I'm doing. So if I start here, come up, down, back up, down, up, and back down, I'm going to end in that corner where I want to start on another triangle. So that actually works out perfect. And yeah, this, these gloves really like to stick the thread to them. So I'm going to come up. I'm going to stop. You can pivot your project if you want, but I'm just going to aim for this corner over here with my needle. Now I'm going to come back up, aiming for right here at this T, right at the T section. I'm going to aim for that right below it. I'm going to aim again for this corner. Now I'm going to come back, aim again. Now I'm going to aim again for the other corner. And I'm going to stop it right there. I'm going to trim all this off because my gloves keep sticking to it. Like literally. Now I'm going to come to this one. So I'm going to turn the project just ever so slightly, get it right here, come up, over, turn it just a little to that angle, stop, you can turn it if you have to, which I'm doing it, stop, back up, up. Go back to that corner again. One more time. Twist it again. And stop. Now it didn't end where I wanted to, so my next is to break this and go over to this side. Because of the shape of all these, I'm going with the shape of the triangle itself. And I'm going to stop this and pull it out and show you guys what I'm doing. Just so that you can see it on fabric instead of on paper. And again, the stitching. Let's see if I can get that angle right. So there's one. And you can see the one right next to it. Right there, so I'm going with the angles of the triangle itself. And where's the other one? Didn't we do three already? Or did we just do two? Did we only just do two? I guess so. One, two, three. Oh yeah, we did this one. Good night, Sandy. Or is that you? Who's going to sleep? Okay, that's Jolene. Sorry, I'm like trying to read. So, all right, so I'm going to move on to this one, this one, this one. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So that's all I'm going to do is that through the rest of these triangles. So where was I? So I'm going to come to this one because it stops right here. That works perfect. So let's see. Up, down, up, down, up, down. So yeah, I'm going to stop. Up, down, up, down, up, down. So I start with it right here at this triangle because it will come right back to it. Alright, so we'll start right here. Still on? Yeah. How's it going? Good. So I'm going to come right here, I'm going to drop my thread. Pull it up. I'm liking these gloves too, by the way, Diane. They're, they're, uh, they really like to stick to thread, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, you're wearing your new gloves, I like it. How do you like them? They're good, they stick, they stick to the thread really easily. So I'm going to trim this because I should end down at this corner again. And like there's so much thread stuck to the gloves. <laughs> I'm going to aim for that other corner. Hi, Vicky. And I'm going to come back up. Aim back down. Come 
back up. I'll make a biscuit if you want any, man. Okay. And again, I why did I do that? I drew with my hand, and then it still ended not where I wanted it to. Ay, ay, ay. So many stops and starts, but that's okay because it's a small project and it don't matter. Okay. I wanted to start here, so start up, down, up, down, up, down. What did I just say? Up, down, up, down, up, down. So I'm going to start down here. Hmm. Yeah, it's not going to start where I want it to every time, I guess, because I have to use my, my brain. Gotta use my brain! Okay. So, let's do this again. So I'm gonna come up. Stop right before the tip of that triangle, but I'm away from the line. I'm just making curves. Not a curve, like a straight line, but at an angle. Throw all this thread in the trash. Over towards this side, to the tip of the triangle, back up again, back down, back up, and back down. See, I gotta start and stop again. But that's okay, like I said. As long as I get all these triangles done, it looks like I missed one anyway. I'm just doing the ones that are around the gray for now, and then I'll come back and do something else. I'm trying to just do a bunch of different stitching throughout the whole thing. Let's see. Up, down, up, down, up, down. So, how about this way? Up, down, down, down. So, we're starting from this side, so that way I can go straight to that triangle. <laughs> I'm trying to get a, a flow going here. If you have to do that too, just Give yourself a little, where does it start, where does it stop? By drawing with your finger and remembering where you were, then do it. Okay, so I'm going to adjust it. Oh yeah, I'm making my scissors super small. Oops. Because I stepped on the pedal really, really tightly. I'm going to tie this off. Alright, now I'm going to trim this off. Come down to the one that I missed. Pull this pin out. For now, I'm just going to put all my pins over here on my magnet thing so they don't fall all over the ground. Hi, Michelle. I think Scott said hi while he was in here. Did he say hi while he was in here? Sorry, ladies. I think he did. I don't remember. He was in and out so fast. He's making some biscuits to warm the house up with the oven. Okay. So I'm going to aim again. For right before the, the tip of the triangle, but against, I, um, again, I'm away from it. I'm going to trim this thread off. Just going to make a pile on the quilt. And now I'm going to aim down to the tip of the triangle with the needle. And again, you can tip your projects if you have to. And then again, if you need to tip it, tip it. You can use rulers. This isn't much work to, you know, need a ruler and a ruler set. I don't need a ruler and a ruler foot for this. Plus, I don't like the ruler um, foot for my machine. I don't know why. I just don't like it. All right. So let's see. This one, this one, this one is done. This one, this one, this one is done. Now I need to do this one, this one, this one, this one. I'm talking to myself, obviously. So I'm gonna start here, and it ends here. Good. So I'll start here. But start on this side. See, I got to draw on it with my fingers so that I know which way I'm going. 
You guys thought of anything I should put in the bigger squares? Trying to mix it all up. Something different throughout the whole thing. I could probably do more four-leaf clovers, actually. Just singular in the um, block itself. Or a different kind of flower. Oh, be nice if I trim that away real quick while I'm right here. Okay, so now I'm on this one. Let's see if I can't get this situated. The cool part about little quilts is you can do them on your small home sewing machines. Because there is no need for a lot of throat space with this little stuff. The only space you need is to be able to move your hands, honestly. one off. Me? Am I talking to myself? I think. No, I'm not really talking to myself. Oh yes, happy birthday, Vicki. <clears throat> All right. Take out that pin so it's out of my way. Let's see if I, I don't know, it's not going to matter because that one's sideways. So let's just start on this side because it's right here. your daughter's birthday Teresa happy birthday to your daughter it's everybody's birthday today today's my best friend in California that I grew up with I've known her for well she's 40 today so I've known her since we were six years old so I've known her that long <laughs> We grew up together. We were inseparable when we were kids. It was crazy. That's funny too, because when she was a kid, when we were kids for her birthday, I'd either buy her Valentine's Day stuff, because it was always on sale, or I'd buy her St. Patrick's Day stuff, because that's the next holiday. Okay. So again, I'm starting again. Lots of starts and stops, but it's okay. Grandson's 15th, my daughter's 17th, and my son in law's. Wow, that's a lot of Fe or March birthdays. Or February, sorry. What is this month? February, because it was just Valentine's Day. February birthdays. What am I thinking March for? No idea. My kids are May, June, July, and August. All summer babies. off of here and this one I was able to go to the next one but I'll still have to break thread to do the other one in its section but that's okay so now my whole project is kind of in the throat <laughs> momentarily I'm just kind of turn it to the side a little oh, I gotta turn it to the side just a little bit more
right now to tie it off right here. Oops. Be nice if I pulled the needle up out of the way, huh? Don't want another broken needle. Okay, now to do this one. So I gotta turn the whole project this way. Almost done, so I got this one to do, this one to do. And I think that's all of them for around the gray area. So we'll see in a second. I'll check. Down, up. Yep, gonna end right where I know that's a. this one right here okay one more of this little area to do and then we'll move on to the outskirts I'll move this pin out of here do we ever decide what I, I should quilt in the open squares or should I just do like a all over meander filling the rest of the whole entire quilt or singular singular out all the blocks throughout the whole entire quilt this away and check to see if I got it all. Okay. So let me move all the thread off of you guys where we're at so far. Lay this down and I got that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Okay, I think I got them all. Okay, so, so far, all the ones that are around the center, so this, that, 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 that one, this one, this one, this one, this one, there, right there, and right there, and right here, right there, and so on. So it looks like all the ones around the center are that. Now we need to move on to these solid squares. So should I singular them out? Hi Anna, look what I'm using. The thread sticks to them like crazy, but they work amazing. So they're actually gripping to my tablet very well. So I'm going to leave this right here while we decide what should I quilt there. So I'm going to turn my paper around. Let's see. What could we put in those spots? So let's see how many are around here. So this is solids right here. So I can keep going with the arrow things in the rest of those because there's a lot of solid squares. And I could do something specific for the outer solids. Oh, you know, these outer solid squares on both sides. I don't know if you guys can even see. Um, let me just hold it up again. So I can do something totally different for the dark squares here. 
and then something different in all the solid ones. So any one of these, I could keep doing the lines in. And then around this, I don't know what to do. I can do that S curve thing. So let me try to see if I can draw this out for you guys. Because I'm not really good at free motion quilting that either. I'm more of a long arm quilting it. So let's just draw my section and see if I can do it. So we're going to draw. Pretending this is the section. And it kind of actually goes off at an angle. Um, it would start somewhere right here because you would come down and go back up. Come down, go back up. Come down, go back up. Oops, went too far. It's like an S. And I'm kind of messing it up, obviously. So I'm not used to drawing it. I'm used to just doing, I'm not a doodler, by the way, like some people tell you to do. Yeah, they're making a difference. All the, the thread is sticking to them. <laughs> no, they're gripping really good to the fabric, like really nicely to the fabric. Ooh, I better pick up all this thread off the back or else it's going to get quilted in. See, it sticks. See, sticks pretty good. <laughs> sticks to all the little dots. But, okay. So I'm thinking I'm going to do that in all this area. So this whole area come down to, let's see if I can't point it out. Then this area, this area. So I'll do all these rest of these gray areas all the way around. All the way the rest of the way with that back and forth S curve. I'm going to make sure all this thread is cleaned up before I start going again because I don't want any more. I don't want to be quilting the thread in under the quilt. It's hard to pick all that out. It does get tangled under there. So let's change the screen back up here. Sorry for the wiggling and stuff, guys, again. All right. So again, I'm just going to do an S curve. So I'm going to start kind of crooked in here. And I'm going to make my S curve start from like right here, come down, come back up. That way it turns with the piece. Let's see how it comes out. We'll see how it comes out. Make sure that I have no thread on the back side. You see the whole breaking thread thing? I have a little area right here where it got tangled under here. So that means I have to clip it all off. And that sucks, because I hate when that happens. But I'll clip it all away later, the rest of it. Because it's kind of hard to get it with the gloves on. But Alright, let's do this S-curve now. Ooh, this looks kind of cool on the back, actually. i got to show you guys the back real quick. This is looking really cool, the way it's quilted. So I think I'm going to keep going with what I'm doing here. Obviously. With the half-square triangles areas. Because it looks really cool. So you can see. Let's see how well you can even see it. Focus, focus. And so far, that's what the back side looks like. Let's see if I can't come in closer. So if I keep going with these half square triangles that look cool so now that i'm switching to the s thing but we still have to do something with those solid blocks i did illusion it's the same thing as an attic window honestly all right so i like it it looks cool though both attic window and illusion they all look the same but all right so i'm going to bring this up in under here and i'm going to start the s curve right here so let me see i gotta i gotta think about this in my head down back up down no 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 it's got to angle this way up down up down no that doesn't look right because it has to be able to go into here so we're just going to start it right here 
I'm going to slide to the one side, slide to the other. Or I can go long wise. Let's see how it goes. Hold on, i got to go back and forth with this little S real quick and see. Okay, we're going to go this way. It's going to be awkward, but I will figure it out. It's a good thing, like, if you just, like, draw on your stuff with chalk, too, you can do that to make sure that it looks okay, especially if you don't trust yourself with something. <gasps> so I'm going to start right here in this corner. I'm going to try to just bring an S down to here and then come back up and so on and so forth. It might look kind of sloppy because, like I said, I really suck at some of these, but practice, practice, practice. Okay, let's see what happens. Again, making sure the whole project's the backing is up. Because if you want, if you get it tucked under, you're screwed. It'll get sewn in, and you don't want that, like at all. You don't want it stuck under there. I am winging it. I'm always winging it. I didn't say I was ever. I didn't ever say I was perfect at this this craft. I just it came to me, and I was able to do it. But some of the things that you see online, you're like, hey, I can do that, and then you go to do it, and it's sloppy. Well, me, it does come out super sloppy. Alright, so. Make an ass. Oops, that was not supposed to come up there. And then come back. That does not look like an S. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay, so I guess I'll get it while I go. If I could draw it on paper, I can do it on with thread, I guess. Whatever I'm doing here still looks okay, though. <sighs> yep, this looks good. Whatever. So it looks like I just got like a back and forth curve going. So that's okay. Because I don't care. As long as I'm consistent through the rest of the whole thing. Oops, and I tangled my thread because I stepped on the pedal too fast. I'm going to start right where I just pulled this. Try to drop my needle down right before that last stitch. Alright, let me get this knotted in. And try not to go so fast. I have a bad habit of going really fast.
It is kind of hard to thread the needle with these gloves on, though. Because I can't use my threader thingy. Because I don't know how. Oh my goodness, go in the hole. There we go, come on. Look at it, I did it. and you got a quilt on it you have a quilt like a hand quilting quilting frame sandy or a, a machine quilting quilting frame So this does not look anything like what I drew in my picture, and like I said, I suck at this, so I'm just going to be consistent with this little design through the rest of all these, because <laughs> that's the only thing I can do. And you guys can't even see it from there. Maybe that's a good thing that you can't see it, because it's ugly, <laughs> but I don't care. It kind of looks like flames. I'll show you. I'll show you. It looks really sloppy. Really sloppy. All right, we'll see if I can't hold that up. Super sloppy. Oh, and there's a thread in there. That is like really super sloppy, but it kind of looks like either flames or zebra stripes. <laughs> I don't care. Kind of looks like zebra stripes. Look more like zebra stripes than anything. All right, as long as I'm consistent with that same ugliness, then it should be good. <laughs> All right, so let's go to this one right here. Now I gotta pick up all this thread because it's like literally everywhere. It was made by ex-husband and kids years ago. Looks like the sand after the tide goes, you know, when the tide washes in and then it washes back out and leaves those marks in the sand. Yes, looks like that too. Like I said, as long as I'm consistent with ugliness, it'll be okay. Because then it won't be ugly. It'll be actually design a design element, obviously. All right, so they started ended this way. Let's go this way with them now. Bring my bottom thread up. Still got to do something in all these squares, but I don't know what. Again, what is wrong with me today? I'm going to check the tension on the back side just in case. Oh, it's still good. It's weird. Normally I can go super duper duper fast. Guess I'm just not moving my hands fast enough for the video. Alright, let's re-thread this. I just vacuumed my room too and now I have thread everywhere. It's a design element that's all your own. Yep. All my own. Nobody else's. 
like I said, though, if you mess up, like I just, you know, like I've done, as long as you do the same thing, though, over and over again, take that mess up and turn it into something, it don't matter. But now it's growing on me, so it's okay. It's growing on me looking at it. It's like, hey, this actually does look cool. I'm going to take this one out of the end. That way I don't hit it accidentally with my presser foot. Check and see if anything is catching your thread. It comes off the spool. Maybe you're stopping the spool from allowing. No, it's not the spool. It's because sometimes when I go too fast and then too slow and then too fast, I move this too fast, the, the quilt top itself. And I, I don't know why it does it. It just rips it right out. It's kind of weird. I just got to learn that whole steady steady pace thing. I have a bad habit of not having a steady pace. Plus this machine is very well known for thread breaking with free motion quilting. Yep, this one likes to break thread a lot with free motion quilting, but a lot of machines do. It just depends on how fast or how slow you're going. Because when I do it on the brother, I break thread a lot on the brother. That one doesn't like the free motion quilt though. <clears throat> Oh, this is a longer pass on this one. Woo wee! I'm going a long way on this one. But I shall. Oh, I'm out of bobbin. Good thing I rolled three bobbins. <laughs> Just in case. Never know. I didn't think I was going to be quilting as much on it, though. Then that, you know, design change at the last second, when you look at something, you're like, what should I do there? What should I do there? I kind of just like to do whatever. All right. Ta-da! Bobbin's changed that quick. Okay. There, I have a stitch regulator for this machine. I just don't use it. Actually, I don't even know where it is. in a box somewhere. There we go, going too fast again. Sometimes I just re-thread the whole thing too. Okay, I can't do that with the gloves on. Hmm. 
Okay. Well, let's thread this whole entire thing all over again. Down. Over. Down. And into the hole. Put these glovies back on. And then I'm watching in on the four thumbs up. Come on, girls, give her a thumbs up. <laughs> yes, thumbs up, guys. That helps people actually see my videos. I was watching another video about what thumbs up and and comments section. If the, a lot of comments actually spreads it too. Um, the more watches is another reason it gets to the top for people to see. So if someone types in something with the words so and Sunday all in the same sentence, my videos will come up number one for people to watch because mine are so Sundays always. So but yeah. Thumbs up and all that stuff. Oh my god, it did it again. This time it wasn't from going fast either. It's just happening. One of those days. Trying to adjust it just right. Again, making sure that that backing is not, not in the way because it does come down and fold down really easily.
it's right at that top curve every time. That's what's happening. Every time I go into this one top curve on every single one of these, that's why I've lost thread all those times. I can tell right now, just because it did it again. Right when I came into this top curve. So I was trying to angle it a certain way. That is why I just lost thread. So it doesn't like me moving the machine or the fabric that certain way. Oh, and don't forget, if for those of you who didn't uh, see, I put my feed dogs down and everything as well. Um, you could just as well quilt with them up, obviously, if you don't have a machine that does that. Old, I don't know how many old machines do or do not allow the feed dogs to go up and down, but... I made sure that those are down. And mine's on the front side, so if I didn't remember, I just look right here on the front side of the machine, and it's like right there. So since I'm right here at this half square triangle, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of those bumps that what other people call dot to dot, but I'm just calling it tip to tip because it's what I'm doing. I'm just going to do these um, half square triangles with that, fill all those in while I'm at it, get this done faster, and then I'll come back with all the... Um, solid squares Go around this whole project, getting the rest of those done. They should end in every single one. Hopefully. Oh no, this one won't. I'll have to restart. After this one, but... Got the machine up in the throat now. it off right here. That way I can get all these outer edge half square triangles finished. So I'm just going to turn project right here, come over to that side, and just go. Coming to the next one. again. And come over to the next triangle. 
So I'm getting three done at a time this way, at least. It smells like biscuits in my house. This is not made biscuits. Yeah, sometimes it's the seams. When I hit certain seams, it'll knock the thread out too. Just depends. It's usually when it's four half square triangles coming together. That's definitely always an issue. But also, certain curves or angles. And then all I need to do is the solid squares. Well, not solid, the printed squares and the solid ones. But I want them all to be different. So I need to think of something to make all those different. I could probably just do that whole four leaf clover though within them. Looking at this pattern that looks like a rose where it is the darkest. Where it is the darkest? What do you mean? You'll have to explain that one to me. Like where the the dark areas folding behind. that back way again every time so it doesn't like to go back that way towards the machine it doesn't like me to pull the fabric this way which is the way the needle threads anyway so that could be why it undoes it every time because that is the way the needle is threaded I'm not threaded front to back on this machine this one threads from side to side that's probably what's happening is it's pulling it out when I go towards the way the needle is threaded. That's exactly what's most likely happening here. And it's storming outside right now. So if my internet goes out, I'm very sorry. It's just really stormy outside with rain and wind like crazy. And if anybody knows anything about Havasu, we get some really crazy wind here. Like, super crazy wind. That's with that one done now. We'll take a look at it and see what you guys think so far. 
because I got to do something in all those solid squares and try to be able to fit it into this video. All right, so let me lay this right here on the table as best as I can. So there's my crappy, wavy looking wave things all the way around. Is that even seeable? There we go. Sort of. I'm trying to go slow. So sorry. Okay, so then the rest of those so now I need to put something in anywhere that there is a solid square, I should say. It's not a half square triangle. These aren't half square triangles. And then these two grays, there's two in every corner. So there's two in every corner. I need to do something totally different in all of those. So I need to do something in all these sections. And then something different in this one, and this one, and that one. I've been on though for almost two hours so I think I'm going to get off of here for a little bit because I need to take a break and move my body around instead of sitting here. Um, I can come back later and do a finish up of this. I know most of you guys will be in bed. Um, I know most of you guys will be in bed and stuff but I need to take a break. I I'm hurting. Obviously when you quilt make sure you guys sit with your shoulders back and so on and so forth but I need myself a break. <laughs> so let me tip that one more way up. So I'm going to leave it at this for now. You guys got to see me do most of it. So hopefully by the time I come back, I'll have an idea for the rest of all these big blocks that aren't half square triangles. And for the two solid gray ones all the way around, I'm going to leave it right here so that I can think about it while I'm gone. And if anything, I'll just, like I said, I'll just come back in a little while and um, do some more on this. But for now, I'm going to take a break. So thank you guys for watching. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button right there, there, down, there. And also in the description is a link to all of my groups where there will be still photos. There's a group, there's Instagram, and there's my Facebook thing where there will be still, still, still photos of my projects that we work on here in the videos and projects that I do outside of videos that a lot of you, if you really want to see the things that I do outside of video land, they're in the description below. So, all right. So I'll see anyone in a little while. If not, good night, everyone, and have a great rest of your Sunday evening. Bye. Oh, yes. Like my, like like and comment and share all sorts of things.